All right, while we're still in the graphical uh, representation of the uh, LP model, uh, let's talk about a few, um, few aspects of LP models. For example, we <clears throat> sometimes you encounter, <clears throat> sorry, we encounter what, what's called the redundant constraint. What's a redundant constraint? Graphically, it's very easy to be seen. This is, for example, the feasible space that we ended up with. What if we had one more constraint um, that when we plot it will look something like that? We can see easily that this new constraint or this constraint does not, uh, uh, does not contribute at all to the feasible solution space. That means it does not reduce it further, right? So which means that most... Uh, 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 this constraint does not uh, affect your solution, and this is why we call it a redundant constraint. In real life, many um, uh, people who use LP models, they encounter often redundant constraints, and this is due to representing an aspect of the, uh, of the problem that's really not affecting your decision. And this will be shown as a redundant constraint when you represent it uh, graphically. Another uh, property that can be seen graphically is what we call the uh, corner point solutions. Okay, um, you always, uh, or whenever we have two decision variables, you will see that the uh, feasible solution space is like a polygon, this yellow polygon that we have. All right, so we know for sure, because remember we're trying to maximize or to minimize, and to do that using the method that we used before, that if you plot any line representing the uh, the objective function, okay. And we have seen and we have proved that why to find the optimal solution, we we will be uh, moving this line away from the origin, okay. In order because when we do that, we are increasing the profit, and it will be maximized when we touch the last point. And the same happens if we are minimizing, so we will go towards the origin all right so in other words the optimal solution will be always on uh, one of the corners of the polygon now of course in the previous example this uh, uh, this point is not certainly is not the candidate for optimal solution because this is zero right and we are trying to optimize but in general if uh, if the polygon does not touch the origin your optimal a solution is only uh, always at one of the corner points. So another way to find the optimal solution instead of drawing plotting the objective function line uh, is to find the coordinates of each one of these, okay, by solving the um, two equations or the system with two equations of two unknown, and then plug each one of the, your answers into the optimal uh, or the objective function and the one that gives you the highest one this is your optimal solution all right but if you already have reached this uh, this step where you have already the feasible solution space i strongly advise you then to use the method that we use that draw plot the objective function line move it away from the origin and then find your optimal solution but it's it's good to know that your objective your optimal solution is on, always at one of the corner points. Now you may ask, okay, we have seen or we have learned how to uh, find the solution whenever we have a maximization problem. What if we have a minimization problem? Would the procedure be different? The answer is no. In fact, there are only two minor differences that would not really uh, make a lot of difference. The first one is in the shape, in the, in the, in the model, how does the model look like? Um, whenever we have a minimization problem, certainly you cannot have the case where all the constraints are less or equal, because in this case, your, uh, your solution is certainly is equal to zero, right? When, when you are trying to minimize something and all your constraints are less or equal, like in the previous example that we had. So certainly then the solution zero, zero will be minimizing your objective and it will be meeting all your constraints. So that's it. So always, and this is not because of 
that because of the logic behind the problem. Whenever we have minimization problem, we always have a constraint that's greater or equal or equal type. The second one, graphically, when we are solving a minimization problem, instead of moving the objective function line from the origin, we move it towards the origin. All right, and that's it. And the last point that it, it touches uh, this line, this will be your objective, uh, your optimal solution. Okay, so let's remember what we what what we have found in our previous uh, problem. We have uh, found the optimal solution to be at the intersection between uh, the yellow line and the green line. Okay, which represent the storage constraint and uh, the inspection constraint. Uh, so here we go. It, it's the intersection of this line and this line. Now, these or the uh, the constraints that are represented with these lines, we call these constraint the binding constraint. This is very important concept in uh, linear programming. Think about it this way: why they are binding? Because it was these two lines that stopped us from moving further from the origin. Remember, we had this line representing an isoprofit and we were moving it away from the origin and we wanted to move as far away from the origin because we wanted to have the maximum profit possible however these two lines these two lines like they stopped us they said here we go stop here you cannot move further because otherwise you'll be exiting the feasible solution space and your solutions will not be feasible so they stopped us they binded us, okay? They are called the binding constraints. Now, how can you find, or how can you, if you are not looking at it graphically, how you can recognize which constraint is binding and which is not? The characteristic of a binding constraint is that when you plug your optimal solution values in the left-hand side, okay, the value of the left-hand side will be equal to the value of the right-hand side. Let's do the, <coughs> the example of the inspection constraint. Okay, the inspection constraint said 2x1 plus x2 less or equal than 22. So if I plug my optimal solution, which is 9 and 4, as you can see here, right? It's 9 and 4. I plug it there. So it's 2 times 9, 18, plus 4, that's 18 plus 4, 22, which is exactly equal to the right-hand side. All right? So this is how we find, if you don't have it graphically, this is how you can tell whether this, so, uh, this constraint is uh, binding or not. Its left-hand side would be equal to the right-hand side. All right. Now, what about the other cases? What about the constraints that uh, are not binding? Okay. Okay. Um, so these are non-binding constraints, like in our case, the assembly constraint was non-binding and also the non-negativity constraints were non-binding for us. In this case, unlike the binding constraint, the left-hand side would not be equal to the right-hand side. So let's do the example of our assembly constraint. Let's plug the optimal uh, solution, which is nine and four in the assembly constraint equation so we have 4 times 9 36 plus 10 times 4 40 plus 36 that's 76 76 on the left hand side and 100 on the right hand side right so first before i proceed let me uh, just emphasize one thing what does the left hand side of a constraint mean we we learn we we know what the right hand side means right from the problems that we have done so far we know that the right hand side we get it based on what is the available resource what about the left hand side very simple the left hand side is what we have actually used and that's why the difference between the left hand side and the right hand side you see or uh, let's put it this way what i'm saying here is this what i'm using is 76 hours of the assembly time while what's available it's 100 so i'm using 76 out of the 100 
So what does it mean? That means I have, I'm, I'm not using some of the available resource, right? And this is what we call a slack. Okay, slack is the difference between the left hand side and the right hand side. So and it represents an unused resource, an idle resource. This is very, very important. All right. Now, in a uh, greater or equal constraint, the difference between the left hand side and the right hand side, we call it a surplus. Okay, slack and surplus are very, very important concepts of in linear programming. 